Okay, so this is going to be part one of the axial skeleton from your sheet there. Uh, so we're going to start with the first bone on this list at the top, which is the occipital bone. Folks, feel the back of your head, the bottom of the back of your skull where your, your neck meets the back of your head. And say occipital bone. occipital bone. Good. That's this bone back here. And it goes all, its border is this crazy ridge, like ridge line that's going all the way around. It looks kind of like a river. See how it's whipping back and forth and moving through there? Okay, this is a special, there's a special name for this, and that is the word right here on your sheet, the word suture. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a definition here. The word suture, now in surgery, suture means to sew two pieces of skin back together but in this context it is a joint in the skull okay those are joints between two bones of the skull now unlike the other joints that we looked at like between the femur and the tibia and things like that that were movable these are completely immovable joints they're not sealed when you're born you have soft spots in your head called fontanelle and as your skull grows those those grow together now as they grow together they grow like this as opposed to growing like this they don't make flat edges with one another they make these ridges Folks, why do you think that is? Solid. Yeah, it adds a lot of strength to have that type of to have that type of uh, joint there. It's like a lot of overlapping. Okay, this suture right here for this whole bone here was the occipital in the back of your skull, but this suture right here is the border of that. Just like rivers border states a lot, this suture borders this bone. This is called the lambdoidal suture. Um, some books just call it lambdoid suture. It's the same thing. Uh, yours calls it the lambdoidal. And so it's the border between the occipital and the next bone on your sheet. But let me cover a couple of these other things first. The first one is external occipital protuberance. Okay? That's a huge word for a bump on the back of your head, and it really means that. Feel the back of your head. There should be a bump sticking out there. Some people, it sticks out further than others. That is your external, because it's on the outside, occipital, because it's on the occipital bone, protuberance, because it's a bump. Okay. Uh, a protuberance is a type of what? What's the sticky-outy thing called? The general term for sticky-outy thing? Process process good so the protuberance is a special type of process usually it's wider and a little a uh, little shorter in the protuberance we got a few other protuberances we're going to look at <laughs> now next one on your sheet is occipital condyle if we look at an inferior view of the skull you see there's this m magnificent hole right here it's just huge any guesses what passes through there Do you, say it again yeah, your spinal cord specifically passes through this hole. Now remember, your spine are the bones, are the vertebrae that, that the spinal cord, which is a nerve bundle, travels through. Okay, So this is the foramen magnum. Foramen means hole. Magnum is, is I think, big. You know, like the gun, the magnum, you know, 44 magnum, big gun, make big hole. So... Um, so foramen magnum, now on either side of those, you'll see these little rounded bumps there. Now, we saw condyles before in the knee, and where there were condyles in the knee, they were forming a joint. Okay, This does the same thing. These condyles form up with the first uh, cervical vertebrae in the spine, uh, so it connects here to your spine. So that is the occipital condyle. All right, now... The next bone is the parietal bone, okay? Put, the ha put your hands on the top of the back of your head right here, okay? All right? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can't... Oh, I'm sorry. just wanted to do that. And say parietal bone. All right. Parietal bones. You have two of them. They're paired, one on each side here. So this is the parietal bone on your left side, and this is on your right side. They make up a majority of what, what's known as the cranium. And I want to distinguish this for a second. So on the side here, right skull. Skull is divided into two parts. 
Okay. The skull is divided into cranial bones and facial bones. Cranial bones, their job <laughs> is to protect what? <laughs> what are they protecting? The brain. That's exactly right. Okay. They basically form a helmet for the brain. And facial bones are, are in the face. Pretty obvious, I guess, huh? Um, so cranial bones are the ones that house the brain in some way. These first four are cranial bones, occipital, parietal, frontal, and temporal. In fact, if you took AP Psych, you realize that these are also the names of those lobes of the brain that they're right next to. So right next to the parietal bone is the parietal <laughs> lobe. So this right here is the parietal bone. It's enormous. It goes all the way down to here on this side, all the way back to here. And there's another suture in the middle, okay? So your soft spots when you're little are right back here where these two sutures come together and up here in the front where these two sutures come together. Now this one here, you can appreciate the name of. What do we call a line that bisects the body this way? Sagittal. This is the sagittal suture because it goes right down the, the center. Technically it would be the mid-sagittal because it's right on the mid-sagittal plane of the body. But that's the sagittal suture that brings the two parietal bones together. The other suture, because there's really not a whole lot of markings on the parietal bones themselves. They're pretty <laughs> large flat bones. Is this one up here? What plane of the body is this? What was it? Coronal. This is the coronal suture. Sometimes this plane of the body is also called the frontal plane. Guess what this bone's called? Frontal bone. Okay. So this right here is the coronal suture. This one here is the sagittal suture. Now, <coughs> in the frontal bone, it some somebody said, yeah, it's kind of like your forehead. Yeah. Uh, if you've got a receding hairline, then yes, because it goes all the way back to right here in your skull, which is pretty far back. This whole bone right here, which includes where your eyebrows are and stuff, that's your frontal bone, the frontal bone right here. Now, of the frontal bone, there is two little holes, and you can't see them because this is a plastic skeleton. Okay, They didn't actually fill these holes in um, but uh, or show you where the holes are. But the name gives it away. The name is supraorbital foramen. Okay? Supra, as in superior. Orbital. Orbit means eye socket. Foramen means what? Hole. So it literally means hole above the eye socket. Supraorbital foramen. Okay? Um, next, on your sheet is the glabella. Folks, feel where your eyebrows are on your face. You should feel a little bit of a bony ridge. Now, this is less prominent in females than in males. It's one of the things that uh, makes a man's face look more manly is having these, like, I don't know, <laughs> caveman eyebrow ridges that stick out like an awning over your eyes. It's one of the things that makes males look more male. Now, don't panic if you're a you know, lady and you have some glabella. That's normal, okay? But it generally is more prominent in males than in females. So that is the eyebrow ridge right here, is the glabella on either side. The next thing on here, uh, frontal sinus. Now, sinus is another word we need to cover. It's specific to, uh, pretty much specific to the skull. I can't think of an example in the... Uh, in the appendicular skeleton. A sinus is a hollow chamber in bone. Now there's other examples that are not in bone. Some blood vessels are called sinuses because they're huge. But um, a sinus, I wouldn't be able to show you on this even if I cut it in half because again this skull is plastic. There's a hollow chamber that sits back behind your eye right here, uh, right, right above the uh, eyebrow, right behind the glabella. There's one on this side, and I'm tracing the outline of it here, and there's one on this side over here, too. They're pretty big openings in those spaces. Uh, they are just basically hollow chambers. There's a lot of different hypotheses on why we have sinuses. 
they play a part in warming and humidifying the air that we inhale through our nose. Uh, being hollow lightens the, the weight of the skull, but a lot of times they cause problems. Raise your hand if you've ever had any, a sinus infection or any sinus trouble. It's these guys. There's one here. There's another one right here. A lot of times when the weather changes or it's getting ready to rain or allergies are going nuts, you'll get sinus headaches and sinus pressure, and they're going to be in these spaces because they're really, really, really tiny holes that allow them to drain, and it's really easy for those to get sealed up and build up pressure in those spaces and when pressure builds up nothing can drain a lot of times it's grounds for infection and that causes a whole gamut of other issues as well but uh, that's what your sinuses are now we're going to turn to the side here to where your temple is and there's a bone called the temporal temporal bone right here and it goes all the way oh, got it wrong there this this guy right here that border right here uh, it's not on your sheet, that's the squamous suture that borders this. And it's right next to, what's this bone called again? Temporal is right next to this big old bone, which is the, which one? The parietal, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now there's a few features on this one that you need to know. Uh, first on there was external auditory meatus. Guess what does auditory mean? Listening, right. This meatus is a word for hole, uh, it's all, or, or like a canal or tunnel. There is this hole right here, your ear hole, is your external auditory meatus. And that's what sound travels into to hit your eardrum. So external auditory <coughs> meatus is the first one. Next is a styloid process. And remember we had some styloid processes on the wrist as well. But this styloid process is this crazy looking stalactite thing hanging down back there, okay? Styloid process. There's a muscle that attaches to this that helps you swallow. It's attached to this thing in your throat here. The muscle's called the stylohyoid, and it lifts up your, your uh, throat as you swallow. In fact, try that real quick. Put your fingers on your throat. Okay, now swallow. You'll feel that whole thing lift up. It's the muscle that's attached to this that allows that to happen. Um, next one is the mastoid process. Feel behind your ear, you'll find this big bony chunk right there. That's the mastoid process. And what attaches to that is a huge muscle known as the sternocleidomastoid. If you turn your head to the side, you can feel like this big round muscle column sticking out there that attaches to your sternum. That's the sternocleidomastoid. It allows you to move your head from side to side. So that's what this is for. Big, big bone chunk to attach a big muscle. I was, I was petting a dog the other day, and I felt behind its ears, you know, because they like when you scratch them there. Dog had huge mastoid processes, and it makes sense if you think about it. Form follows function. How does a dog kill its prey? Yeah. They bite in, they shake their head from side to side. So it stands to reason that they're going to have big uh, sternocleidomastoid muscles. They've got to have a huge mastoid process. Okay, next is the mandibular fossa. I'm going to move this jaw that was <laughs> wired in. I don't know who did this work, but I appreciate it. Um, there's this dent right back here, and you can feel this. You feel on the side of your cheek here and open your jaw wide you'll feel an opening right in there, a dent. That's the mandibular fossa. Mandibular, because your mandible is your jawbone. It's right here on each side. And fossa, because it's a shallow depression. Together, this makes your temporal mandibular joint. Temporal mandibular joint, because it's the joint between the mandible and, and the temple, uh, our temporal bone, and this is why they call that syndrome, where it pops and cracks and hurts. The TMJ stands for temporal mandibular joint syndrome. Um, so this right here, on either side, is the uh, is the uh, mandibular fossa. Um, so the next thing we've got on here is going to be the carotid canal. And that can be seen from the underside here of the skull. Okay, It's going to be on this one here. They're showing these as like dents on either side. The carotid canals are back here. Okay, And then uh, next one is zygomatic arch. Now this is kind of crazy. 
your cheek feel the side of your cheek right here folks most of that is is just like either muscle or tissue because your cheek right there on the side is just this little thin frame that extends out from there this is the zygomatic it's technically called the zygomatic process but you see when it joins up to the zygomatic bone it makes what's called the zygomatic arch you see the arch right there um, and then finally your zygomatic bone is your cheekbone it's this guy right here up in front you yes, feel right up here right below your eye that's your zygomatic bone and that's the end of part one